Okay, so um, I'm a biology instructor here. I teach an intro bio and also the ecology lab. So I thought today would be a really great opportunity to talk about intro lectures and core labs as an example to show you what you could do in a similar type course in your own discipline. So my contact info is up there in the case you need anything, but remember that the Slido is there as well. So science education and science literacy is something that is really important in the US. It's really important worldwide. And over the last like 20 or so years, we've been saying that we need to do less in terms of content and more in terms of practice so that students actually learn science authentically. So everything we've been looking at for literacy has been around getting practice doing actual science. So my students in general ecology lab have been doing this by doing field work. And a lot of their field work is inspired um, by what they're doing in the Atlanta community. And just so that you don't think that I'm just going off the rails in terms of um, frameworks or any of that kind of thing, the Ecological Society of America, there we go, um, has a framework that actually focuses on a lot of ecological things, but the sustainability ones that we focus on a lot are humans on ecosystems and ecosystems on humans, how those things interact and how important they are for understanding ecology and our impacts on humans. And so we talk about these things, we go through these things in this second year lab very deliberately because this is the framework that's important. But also this framework is important. So we go through the SDGs, we cover all the SDGs across the lab, across the semester, they're usually in solo or in combination. We have the most focus on climate action, life below water, and life on land, because we're covering ecology, but we touch on all these other things to help enforce that they're all related to each other. Okay, so we cover each of those things. When we're talking about these in particular, one of our sites is Proctor Creek in Atlanta. So Proctor Creek is a part of a giant watershed of which um, all water kind of flows in a specific way and it connects communities. So we look specifically at Proctor Creek in Atlanta to see the history of how water has flowed and how human interactions have shaped the ecology of that space. And so what does that actually look like? We have teams of community members, researchers, our students, and wildlife professionals all going out to answer questions that are of importance to the city of Atlanta, to our community groups about the health of the ecosystem and the health of the people around that ecosystem. Okay, so they're finding little macro invertebrates, they're cataloging and cleaning up pollution. But you know, this all looks fun, it looks cool. Are they learning anything? Turns out, yes. We've measured it. There's increases in their sustainability knowledge breadth, knowledge depth, and their complexity about how they understand those things. So if you want to, there's a nice um, paper, there's the QR code if you wanna find it. This was with one of my former um, TAs and graduate students for that class. We had the students do concept maps, and so what you're seeing here in the black was their original map. What you're seeing here in the red is everything they add to it after the experience. This is the simplest map I could fit on there, but many of those maps become way more complex. So the students really do start to see the connections between things and how things are really more complex than just memorizing facts. Turns out also, it does not matter whether those students had previous experience ever being in a creek or ever being outside. And it also doesn't matter if they feel personally inspired or personal growth from that. Everybody experiences growth from this experience regardless of their past, right? And regardless of whether this is something that inspires them for their future. However, those who are most engaged in this work um, that mention the learning objectives around engagement in the community and that kind of thing do actually show the most growth. So those who really hit that learning objective also show the most complex gains in terms of their um, concept maps that they build and what they get out of the experience. So it's good for everyone, which is a really great thing that we were able to find. Not everybody gets to take that lab though, so we wanted to bring this into the intro lecture, which serves about 600 students in a given year and we wanted to make sure that students in lecture, not just those going outside, would get some sort of experience that would be akin to this. Right? We wanted to take the SDGs into this particular large lecture class. And so in this large lecture class, we have a flipped format. So students do pre-readings on a website ahead of time that we've collated and, and drafted ourselves as faculty. Then when they come in, they work with that material. We're already talking about a lot of the things in the SDGs already but we weren't making it really explicit. But all the SDGs were already there. So what we decided to do was then make direct connections to the SDGs by literally labeling it. We're gonna put the logo in, we're gonna tell you about how this content fits in with the SDGs so that you see the SDGs are not this abstract concept, 
It's literally the content you're learning, and you can connect it to whatever your major is, whatever your uh, goals are after the course as a professional in the working world. So post-GT, being involved with these goals. So we cover, again, all the goals it, across the term. There are about 42 readings, so each one gets about two and a half readings per each. Each SDG, there's one to six readings. There's that range on how much they get covered because certain ones are easier to cover um, in a biology class than others. But each one, each SDG gets um, a little bit of time. And so if you want to ask, like, how will I know if the students actually are learning from it? Well, it turns out we're in the middle of testing it. We've got a survey that we're implementing that asks them to name the SDGs, behaviors related to those SDGs, their beliefs and the connections to the eventual careers that they want to have with those SDGs, and the information from the class. So this is kind of an ongoing um, project. So we started this. In the end of spring 23, we implemented the survey with the old textbook. Then in summer of 2023, we revised the text to have all the SDGs put into place. So each of those readings, we rewrote them so that they had the SDGs more explicit. And so then when we got to fall, what we ended up doing in fall was at the start of the semester, surveying the students um, before they even see the textbook. And then at the end, once they've done all the readings again, <laughs> Um, but now these new textbook readings have the SDGs put into place. So what we're doing now is trying to compare what does it look like if you saw the old textbook, what does it look like as a baseline, and what does it look like if you see a textbook with uh, these SDGs integrated. So that's it for my time, but thank you all so much, and I hope that you've started, started to see something that you might be able to adopt in your own class. <laughs>